Lord, Solar Power, album review, let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning, here tonight to chat about the latest from Lord. And also, I want to say, uh, yes, I, I haven't been around the last week or so. Uh, I'm a dad now. We have a little girl in our world now. We had to get our sleep schedule on track. Um, didn't really miss too many albums. The only one that I wanted to review was that Killers album, but it was fine. It was fun. Now, back to business. Lord is a New Zealand based singer songwriter. Uh, in a very short period of time, she has become larger than life in indie pop. And to an extent, uh, I, I, I do see the hype about her. I, I Even though I wasn't that into her debut album, Pure Heroin, it was fine. It had some great singles. I mean, team is great. As a matter of fact, more often than not, I think the songwriting on that album is really good. But a lot of the deep cuts on my end were just a little average for my liking. However, I, uh, her follow-up album, Melodrama. Now, while I didn't think that this was album of the year material, I thought this was a gigantic step in the right direction, an album that I really loved. Between the big hits like Green Light and Liability and so some of the deep cuts on here, I thought that Lord on this album came off larger than life and was a hell of a performer. Which leads me to these new singles. And I, Leading up to this album, I didn't know what to make heads or tails of these things. Now I'm just going to come out and say it. The, the majority of this album is just, it, I, I get what Lord was saying. I get what Lord is going for, but it's just not my cup of tea. This album goes downhill pretty fast with California. It dives into fame, mostly her rejection of it for a more peaceful life. I don't know, it's, it's a fine theme. It's one that she's touched down upon in the, in the past. I mean, Royals. But for me, it just seems, I don't know, a little half-baked, a little not thought out. Not to mention these ho-hum, very light on the years, fluffy instrumentals. Just not, not my cup of tea. I personally haven't been into Stone to the Nail Salon since it dropped. As far as themes go, yeah, it, it, it does belong here. But this, to me, sounds like a folk singer who shopped at Urban Outfitters for the first time and went home and wrote the song that she thought was going to make her, and it, this is it, and it's just very average. Hell, hearing this makes me pine for the days of pure heroin where I wasn't even completely sold on Lord. And we get tracks like The Man with the Axe, and I get it, a lot of these tracks come from Lord's heart, and her heart is in the right place. But how are these tracks so safe? So boring. The themes are on point. The writing is usually fine, but these tracks come off so incredibly safe. And Domino is is, is a little is a little too sunny for me, and that that's coming from a deadhead. I don't know. For me, listening to this album, Lord is actually losing me with a lot of these later tracks, minute by minute. But I will say this: I mean, th there's certainly some good tracks here. This album's not all bad. I, I think The Path is a really good intro. I love the mystery of this track. I love how hazy and psychedelic it is. As far as a deep dive here goes, it's actually really interesting. Now, another deeply rooted theme of this album is nature and the sun. The track is no different, and yes, it's a little hippy-dippy at times, but between the sun-baked licks and the glorious harmonies, I actually think this works. And while Solar Power, I really did not enjoy that much when it first dropped. I actually think it's... A pretty nice single. I mean, I worried about this track. I worried about this album listening to this track. But for me, you know, a guy who grew up with 60s radio rock blaring, uh, this is a nice throwback track. In a weird way, it almost reminds me of, like, Father of the Bride from Vampire Weekend. Falling Fruit, I actually think, is really good. I mean, absolutely it works compared to some of the deeper cuts on here. That's that's for damn sure. I love the layered vocal harmonies here and the sunny atmosphere. For me, this seems like one of the most true-to-form tracks. It's also genuinely out there. And I think, all around, Secret from a Girl Who's Seen Us All is probably my favorite track here. It's a letter from Lord to her younger self, and as far as a complete thought goes here, it's a home run, I think. It's sweet, it's something that we can all identify with, you know, it's got a great hook. It's likable, and from those hazy licks of that spoken word outro by Robin of all people, this is actually just a really likable track. Man, this this album is sloppy. I mean, it is certainly all over the place. I mean, Big Star is great. This is a really sweet ballad to Lord's Dog Who Passed Away. As a matter of fact, it might be her most heartfelt performance here. But, like, I hear this track, and I enjoy this track, 
And then I hear Lord making comments about this track, talking about that this and this entire album is about how precious life is. And I get that on this track. I really do, but I wish I heard more of that across this entire album. But then we get Leader of a New Regime, and hey, remember all those half-baked ideas from earlier? Well, they're back, and they're worse than ever. I've never been that into Mood Ring, either. At the very least, earlier on, on some of the tracks that I enjoyed, you know, I liked some of the vocal harmony, some of the layering. This just sounds like an awkward 90s cover. And yes, I know that there is a strong satirical edge to this track. Don't worry. It's a real shame there's, there's no real bite to it. And Oceanic Feeling, a as a finale, I've got so many mixed feelings on. It is a ballad to her family her homeland. It is drawn out. It is visual. And guess what? It is sweet and one of the most heartfelt things on this entire album. Like, it is full of passion. That's not the issue. The issue is that it drags for over seven minutes and it is so tame that I can barely keep awake. Uh, this is a drastic drop off from melodrama. I thought that was Lord pushing in the right direction and pushing indie pop in the right direction. This is an album that shows Lord taking a step back, enjoying the simpler things in life, appreciating, you know, family and nature, as well as rejecting fame. Those are all interesting topics. But between this album's odd shift for the psychedelic, some weak songwriting, and some weaker instrumentals, this is just not my cup of tea. I'm feeling a decent five on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.